Hey there, I'm Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. Welcome back to week 16 in my 25 Crafts to Christmas countdown. I've got some exciting Dollar Tree crafting news for you, and that is cutting boards are back. So a couple years ago, I used a Dollar Tree cutting board, and I painted it like with chalkboard paint, and I wrote baking Christmas memories on it as like a little Christmas craft to decorate your kitchen, and it was like hugely popular, but totally viral on Pinterest. It was super exciting. And then I went back to Dollar Tree because I was like, I'm going to make more cutting board crafts. This is awesome. And all the cutting boards were rectangular shape. And it's like, dear Dollar Tree, I don't buy your kitchen items to cook. I buy your kitchen items to craft. And these cutting boards are way cuter than the rectangular cutting boards. So I kind of thought like all hope was lost and I would never make a cutting board craft again. And then I was at Dollar Tree the other day and I saw that these were back. Instead of the rectangular ones, we got the cute little ones with a the handle. They come in red and white. So I'm going to celebrate and make a couple of Christmas cutting board crafts that you can use to decorate your kitchen or your dining room or whatever you want for Christmas. So let's get making. So on my first cutting board, I started with a calendar from the Dollar Tree that has all sorts of cute images. I flipped to the December page that had a little wreath with Merry Christmas on it. And then I pulled out my Waverly chalk paint. I used the colors Mineral, Moss, and Elephant. And I tried to kind of match the background color on that page of the calendar. So kind of like a cream color with a little bit of brown and green accents. Just take a dry brush with your paint and paint back and forth in the same direction. So in this case, I painted up and down all the way. So I added my mineral color first all over the cutting board, and then I came in with a little bit of accents with the elephant and the moss. So I added just a little bit of brown in a few spots to darken it up, and then a little bit of green as well. Once that paint had dried, it was time to rip that page out of the calendar and cut it down to size. The way I do that is by centering my image. So I had to rotate it because there's no way all those words was going to fit on this cutting board. So I just used the wreath. So I rotated my image, I centered it on the cutting board, and then I smoothed it down because that center cutting part has like a little ridge. So if you smooth your paper down, it's going to create a little fold on the paper that matches the ridge on the cutting board. That way you know where to cut. It really doesn't have to be perfect because the cutting board is painted anyway. So if it's not a perfect match with that little ridge, it's not the end of the world. But then I just took some craft scissors and I cut out my little wreath image off my calendar page. Next up, I grabbed some Mod Podge. So I used matte Mod Podge because that's what I prefer, but you can use whatever you want. I just gave a generous coat to the cutting board in the center and then smooth down my little cutout image on top of it. The calendar paper is kind of thin and waxy so it's a little tricky to work with when you're using Mod Podge so be sure to use like a roller or a smoothing tool and kind of watch it for the first five or so minutes as the Mod Podge starts to dry to see if any bubbles form that you can smooth out right away. I wouldn't, I would feel really bad like if you smooth down your image and then walked away because it looked good then but then five or ten minutes later you came back and had all these bubbles that you couldn't do anything about. And then once my first coat of Mod Podge had dried, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, not a big deal, go back and do another coat of Mod Podge over the entire thing. So I did the handle of the cutting board as well. One, so that my image and my cutting board would all have the same finished surface, that matte Mod Podge and second, to protect my paint on my cutting board as well. And then once the Mod Podge has dried, it's time to add a little bow. So I just took some decorative holiday ribbon. I cut two pieces, each of the thicker length, and you kind of lay them in a stack crisscrossed. And then add another piece of the original check pattern. So you have five of the thick and then three of the thin. Use as many or as few as you want, and then bunch it together in the center wrap it with another length of ribbon and tie it with a knot in the back. This way this is like the lazy ribbon hack so you don't have to you know deal with any bows or anything it's just kind of scrappy. The important thing is to cut all of your ends at a 45 degree angle so it looks really nice. Fluff it out as much or as little as you want and then hot glue it in place. 
But that's it, there's my first little cutting board craft using a calendar page. And then on my second cutting board, I went back and used one of my trusty uh, faux tin wall tiles that have been super popular at Dollar Tree lately. And I laid the cutting board on the back of it at an angle. So I really tried my best to make it centered because I didn't want that tile pattern to be wonky on the front of my, of my cutting board. So I just centered the cutting board and I laid it down and traced it out with a Sharpie. Careful, try not to get Sharpie on your cutting board, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. And then I just took my craft scissors and I cut out just on the inside of the Sharpie line. Because when you use a thick Sharpie, your tracing is going to be a little bit bigger than the cutting board. So just cut right on the inside of that line. And then when you're done cutting, you'll notice the adhesive piece on the back will fall just completely away and you'll just have the tin tile piece. And then to cut that little circle in the handle, I just laid my, the little faux tile piece on a cutting mat and used a pen blade. You could use a razor blade or a fingertip blade to just cut a little circle. It wasn't perfect, but it worked. Then it's time to glue your tile piece onto the cutting board. So I had this little tiny tube of E6000 glue and it was like a half a tube that was left over. So I just used that up. I went all the way around the edge. So you want to make sure the edges get really good coverage with glue and then a few dabs in the middle and then flipped it over and smoothed it onto the cutting board and let it dry for a couple hours. Then I came back with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and a very, very dry brush. It actually worked out well because this paint is kind of starting to dry out because it's old, uh, which makes it really easy to use a dry brush technique with. So the important thing is to focus on painting in only one direction. So just paint up and down, up and down, or side to side if you want. And really focus on getting those raised parts weathered. And then I grabbed a little holiday ornament. It looks like a little holiday house from Dollar Tree. It was in the ornament section. And I just hot glued that. I put hot glue kind of around the edges and then centered that right at the bottom of my cutting board. The nice thing about this is with the ornament on the front, now my cutting board will stand up straight on its own without needing a special backing. And then to kind of cover up the weird edge where there was a lip where the tile piece was cut, I just took some braided rope, some red holiday rope, and I hot glued it all the way around the edge. So what I did is I tried to apply the hot glue more to, there was a little lip along the back of the tile piece. So kind of right in that space, I applied the hot glue more so to the tile than to the cutting board. And then I just pressed that little decorative rope into place. And then you can continue to do that all the way around the cutting board. I feel like it just gives this project a little bit more of like a finished effect instead of having those rough edges showing. And then it's time to add a bow. So I did the same kind of type of bow as I did on the first cutting board. I just cut a few lengths of different ribbon. On this one, I did use thinner ribbon though. I used more like half inch. So I cut three pieces of the black and white. And then I also cut three pieces of the skinny green and I kind of laid them in a little X pattern, a little snowflake pattern. And then you bunch it up together in the center. I folded my black and red ribbon in thirds and then I used it to tie it in the center and just tie it with a simple knot and then fluff it out. From there you can trim any pieces like that one was a little too long so I just kind of trimmed it down to length. And then hot glue your bow in place and you're in business. But there you have it. Those are my two little Dollar Tree cutting board crafts for Christmas. I'm really excited that I stumbled upon these cutting boards at Dollar Tree and that they're back. I bought like six of them, so I think I will probably be making a few more cutting board crafts here in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, happy making!